Magbabalik tayo dito sa Kababayan Today. Kasama natin si Richard Sapanta and we're here to talk about his personal art collection that he has been so generous to share with the Philippine community in the Philippines. We're here to talk about that. Um, thank you so much for being here and sharing this with our Filipinos in the Philippines. This is really a very special um, gift to share. On the contrary, I'm very happy to be here for you to give me the opportunity to let you know a little about the exhibit. Okay, so um, Richard, talk to us about how you've been able to amass this um, all these years because it is quite an extensive collection. How do you go about deciding which piece of artwork um, you want to obtain? Sure. Well, it all started probably about 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, like I initially said, I was born and raised in Los Angeles of Mexican background, but really had no real roots in Mexico. That's why Mexicans that are born in the United States are called pochos. Uh, as a poor, I'm, I'm not Mexican, I'm an American, but of uh, Mexican back uh, ancestry. So by starting to collect the art, it's given me the opportunity to really explore the history, the culture of Mexico, the beauty, and uh, visiting various parts of, of Mexico, meeting many of these artists in person, and really developing some very close friendships with many of the artists that I've collected. Okay, here on Kababayan today, we'll give you a sneak peek and you can take a look at some of these uh, beautiful, beautiful artwork from the Zapanta art collection. Um, Mexican modernity, how would you describe this to somebody that doesn't understand what this is? Sure, well, uh, the curator of my art collection was a very, very dear friend of mine. He's a real authority on Mexican history, Mexican art, Gregorio Luke. Uh, you know, the 40 pieces that we selected are a, a compilation of various periods of uh, Mexican history, beginning some of uh, the early masters uh, uh, to the uh, muralists, the famous muralists, Diego Rivera, Jose Clemente Orozco, David Alfaro Siqueiros, uh, some female uh, artists, including Frida Kahlo. Wow, that's a big name. So it's, uh, very fortunate to have a a small piece, but it's a very precious piece. Yes. Uh, Lenora Carrington, uh, uh, other artists, uh, a different period of time was called La Ruptura, the rupture of, art, of a, an artist's movement going away from the traditional indigenous type uh, 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 display of Mexican art mm -hmm. to become more international. Jose Luis Cuevas and various other artists to uh, another uh, movement, it's called the Oaxacan movement, uh, Lucino Tamayo. Uh, Rudolfo Morales and Francisco Toledo. And each of these artists I've met, or most of them, I've actually met them in person. I've had some sort of relationship with them. So I, in that respect, it's been very, very fortunate to, to meet some of these artists as well. Okay, Richard, you are an art lover, an art collector. You are showcasing this in the Philippines. What a gift to the Philippine people. But for the people that don't understand the close ties yes. between the Philippines and Mexico, this goes back centuries, right, to the galleon mm -hmm. trade. Um, and of course, I'm sure you know that. Can you share that with our Cababayans? Uh, of course. Uh, before a year and a half ago, to be honest, unfortunately, I did not know that much about the Philippines. I knew mm -hmm. a lot about Mexico. But the more I explored, uh, you're exactly right. Uh, the uh, Manila galleons for 250 years. The Philippines was ruled via Mexico from Spain by a viceroy. The Manilian galleons, uh, uh, Spanish uh, ships, uh, that was first economic globalization, I assume. You know, two or three times a year, they'd make a long voyage from Manila to Acapulco. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think there's a, a memorial in the Intramuros within the walls of a monument uh, mm -hmm. uh, documenting that. Mm -hmm. You know, shipping uh, uh, items from China, uh, spices, uh, uh, silks, uh, uh, you know, just all kinds of things from China and vice versa. Yes. The Mexicans and Peruvians shipping silver to China. So just because of that uh, uh, trading of, of from back and forth, especially from Mexico to the Philippines, obviously there was cultural, uh, uh, cultural and uh, historical exchanges, not to mention Catholicism, that the Philippine people and the Mexican people are very religious, very Catholic. Yes. Uh, Filipino names are Spanish names, just like, you know, Mexican names. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. the similarities between the two cultures, um, the Mexican indigenous people and the Filipino indigenous oh, people. Oh, yes. You know, populated by Europeans. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing in the Philippines, Chinese as well. So yes. I think there's that uh, definite uh, cultural uh, exchange and uh, commonality. Absolutely. Uh, the Mexicans are very much our cousins in the galleon trades from what I have unearthed from our history. A lot of the outcasts from the Philippines were put on those galleon trades. So these people that survived that long voyage set up camp in Mexico, in fact, ang tuba, which is the coconut wine, originated from the Philippines and was brought to Mexico. That till today, you can have tuba in Mexico. All right, mm. sana po suportahan nyo ang Sapanta Art Collection that is showcasing in the Philippines at the Yuchenko Museum. And make sure that uh, you spread the word around to other kababayans. Maraming salamat po, magbabalik kami. Very good.